Good day to you. It's a beautiful summer day. We've entered the last month of summer. It is towards the end of August and my morning glories are doing great. The weather's cooled off just a little bit. I thought it would be hotter, but it's cooled off just a little bit. So my produce, my tomatoes, my okra, peppers are doing great at the moment. And I've also planted some pumpkins that I'm ready to harvest here in a few months for the fall season and I've trimmed my iris plants my bearded iris right here in this garden and I would like to share with you what they look like trimmed versus untrimmed if you're new to my channel and you haven't been here before I welcome you and I thank you for joining me here I'm Spenta your comments likes subscriptions and shares are greatly appreciated many thanks for your time I'm ready to get started and share my summer gardens with you this is one of my summer gardens and I have many so don't forget to check out my content okay Here I am with some of my trimmed irises. These are bearded iris. And bearded iris are really hardy plants. So if you're looking for a perennial hardy plant, I highly recommend bearded iris. And I have different colors in different gardens. These particular bearded iris are white. And as you can see, I have trimmed the tops and I'll share with you some that have not been trimmed. At this time of the year, I highly recommend that you trim your bearded iris because your gardens can still look beautiful. Your summer gardens can still look beautiful without having the flower on it. Bearded iris is hardy, winter hardy. And I am in USDA Zone 7, and this is actually hardy. If you were living in USDA Zone 5, this would be hardy for you also. Bearded iris is a wonderful plant. And as you see, I've trimmed the tops and I've cleaned the leaves that were dead. And I will go through one more time and I will clean it one more time. So if I take a moment and I step back here with you, you see that this bearded iris has been trimmed. Right here, if I step further back, just to take a moment and share what they look like, they have been trimmed. You see this? So bearded iris does really well. In the summertime, it starts to look a little different and a little yellow if it does that don't be concerned i've had many questions on bearded iris and i decided to make a video on this and explain what the bearded iris actually look like in the summertime so here they are right here versus a garden that i haven't cleaned yet so you see this is my other bearded iris garden and as you see this is what it will look like prior to cleaning it so you have this bearded iris right here, same, different color, but the same type of bearded iris. And I go this way, and as you see, they look so different. One looks like it's dying, and one looks like it's fresh. So if you want your gardens to look pretty, you're going to have to take some time and trim some stuff out of your gardens. An example right here, you see all of that brown that needs to be taken out. So all of these, if you just take your hand, can actually be pulled out. So you see, then you end up with a more fresh root system. And as you see, these are brand new, brand new. So if you cut the iris to here, if you cut your iris to here in the fall season, then it'll do really well. It'll overwinter well. So let it be. It'll grow really pretty, 
shoots out of the ground in the spring. They grow on rhizomes. So every single bearded iris I have here is from a rhizome. I do highly recommend that you take that rhizome cutting every few years, every two to three years. Take some rhizome cuttings off of your bearded iris. And the reason I tell you that is because it likes to have some room. And bearded iris tends to multiply quite fast. So see, it's a plant that's hardy. It's a plant that grows on its own. And it's a plant that multiplies really fast. You just have to take care of it and know how to care for it. And it's not that hard. You see, I've, pl I've trimmed it. I've trimmed the tops. I've taken the dead leaves off of it. So that's all it wants, and it wants some air to go through, and so the rhizomes will be more fresh. It will be more like this, and I need to go one more time through the whole garden because there could be some that I have missed, and I'll clean one more time. In a month and a half from now, when it's the fall season, I will go ahead and trim it halfway down. So I will have it trimmed halfway down. At that point, my morning glories... You can design your morning glories in any way, any form, any shape. At that point, my morning glories, which this is Ipomea purpurea, it's also a perennial. Bearded iris is a hardy perennial. Morning glory is a soft perennial, but it's on vine and it grows continuously. It's a self, it's a self seeder. So it has so many pods. So during the fall season, you have many pods. That's how you can take seeds so that next season you don't have to buy seeds for your gardens. So you see, you can save money that way by not having to purchase seeds. You could take uh, the seed pods off of this. That's what I do every year. And you see what happens? It grows and it continues to... Look at how beautiful that is. Just beautiful. So you could just add sections... Just imagine what I am trying to grow right here, as you can kind of see what I'm going to grow. Perhaps I will share it later. I'm trying to grow a different trellis, different type this year. So I made a bull last year, but every year I have fun with my morning glory plants and I love them because they grow everywhere. They are invasive. So as I mentioned, because they're self-seeding, they come out of the ground like everywhere. And you're looking at them during springtime and during the summertime, you notice, oh, that's a lot of plants. So make sure to trim the ones that are unwanted. And that way your wanted ones, your wanted plants don't your wanted plants do not get choked. So here is a variety of mint that I have. Some more morning glory that I have put this post on here to grow on. It's so pretty. And then you can turn it on there. This is one of my uh, award-winning peppers. It's really nice. So it has many peppers on it. It's a variety of jalapeno. And it's doing really good this year. Let's see if I can share a few peppers with you. There is one right there. They're so green, they're pretty. They hide well. There it is. So they are very small, but they're very spicy. So this is the hottest jalapeno I have. Hottest jalapeno. And it is very hot. And I've named it after my friend. Actually, lots of my plants here are named after friends and family members. I have a beautiful sunflower. Let me show you the sunflower. So large. So beautiful. And I have another sunflower right over here. 
If you're just now joining us, I'm sharing my summer gardens with you and some flowers that are hardy and do very well in drought or summertime when it's towards the end of summer, towards August, September, and it's getting really hot that time of the year in USDA Zone 7, sharing what plants grow well. Here are some greens. Greens will do better in the fall season. However, because there is shade here, I can actually grow some greens here. And there is my okra. You could see this okra growing. You see how much smaller it is versus, let's go ahead and go over to this other okra. Let's go ahead to go to this okra plant right here. And also, I would like to show, perhaps share this angle with you. This is my other okra. It's, it's been planted at the same time. Why is this doing better than the other one? The reason for it is the sun, the amount of sun. You see, these are plants that do well in the sun. This right here is Black-Eyed Susan, different than the sunflower. Black-Eyed Susan, though, and then Black-Eyed Susan and Sunflower are in similar, are in the same family, but they're not the same flower. So they're similar looking, though. Uh, this is actually called Coneflower, not to be confused with Eucanacea. Eucanacea is called, it's the purple uh, or the pink, but it's a purple-pink Coneflower. It's purple Coneflower. That's the color of the plant. It's purple flowers. So, and uh, it's a little bit different than this. It gives a few more and the leaves actually come back. And Eucanacea is so medicinal. It's a great plant. I love Eucanacea. Let's take a look at my okra right there. Okra does really well. When it's this hot in the summertime, just make sure you keep an eye on those okras because they do hide really well in between your leaves and you're wondering hey uh, I had an okra I thought I saw it the other day and you're wondering where did my okra go well your okra is hiding somewhere and now it's much larger than you think it is so it gets tough so if you have okra that gets tough and it's on the vine towards the end of fall I highly recommend you let a few stay on your plant on your okra plants because they will dry and once they dry on the plants, you can then harvest them and they'll have seeds in them. That's the seed pods, right? So this right here, keeping an okra that's small, keeping one that's much larger, it'll actually give you the seed pods and you could save it and share it for next year. This is my okra from last year. So it's not uh, something that I purchased from the store. I just put the seeds on the ground. Everything you see here, is uh, from myself it's not it's no longer from the store so that's nice that means that it's uh, self-sufficient gardening and that's what I like to do here are some hollyhocks and if you want hollyhocks to come back as I've mentioned before in prior videos hollyhocks are very good for this kind of weather it's actually it enjoys full sun also so these are plants these are all plants that love the full sun so they'll come back for you after getting done seeding all you have to do is cut them down and they'll come back like this and they'll add some foliage to your gardens and make them beautiful and i have carrots back there carrots growing in the back another okra plants and some more peppers that pepper plants that belong to friends this is a very 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 hot but Jalokia, so this is a hot pepper. And this is a good one too. Here I have Mexi Bell. Also planted for a friend. All the plants you see here are planted for friends. So all my peppers are planted for friends. And here, in honor of my awesome friends, and here is one of my favorite trees. And this is the Lady Banks Rose. It has gotten this much bigger. If you look at how small that Lady Banks Rose was just a year ago, you'll see how quick it grows. Oh, and it gives aromatic flowers, little yellow flowers with lots of petals on it in the summertime, and it's so amazing. So there you go. You see my peppers and I have some tomatoes on that side. And here is my pomegranate tree. 
This one is a, when you purchase your plants, this one is a purchased tree. So is my Lady Banks Rose. Both are purchased. I purchased them myself. When I purchased them, I made sure that they, I always make sure they are, uh, for my area, they are three to five year plants because if I buy a young plant that is not winter tolerant, they will not do so well. Um, last year, I had negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It was down to negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit and that's kind of scary. So if you're wondering why I have so many flowers and amongst my vegetation, it's because I grow herbs and I grow pr uh, produce as you see. And these flowers help bring in pollinators. So that is what I'm after is all the pollinators because my pollinators make my plants grow better. And this is this is pepper is doing really really well and you can see the sunflower sunflower is drought tolerant and you can see this sunflower is like oh I'm hot it's a hot day but you see that pepper and my tomatoes of course they're constantly harvested and I have tomatoes on the other side too this is a different variety of sunflower also beautiful Oh my, it just looks like it's dancing. There you go, Apomea purpurea, also known as Morning Glory. And here, I'm actually planting this area. I'm actually taking it and I'm going to add some compost to it. Then, of course, I need to till it up. And afterwards, this area is going to have a fall garden in it. Fall garden means my I'm going to go ahead and start for the autumn um, and plant some plants in there. Put some seeds down. I'm thinking about some beets and I'm thinking about some onions. I'm thinking about radishes. Bok choy. Those are some of my other peppers and another sunflower coming up. So that's what I'm doing is I'm prepping this ground as you see. So that's what it looks like before I add compost to it or start tilling it up. So yeah, I have a lot of work to do too. You see, I have to pull all the grass out. So if you want gardens that are pretty, you'll have to take the time. Yeah, you'll have to take the time for it. And it is a chore. It is a chore, but it's such a beautiful chore because you come home and you see your plants or if you actually are at home and you're a landscaper then you see your plants often and if you are not one person that's at home and then you plant all over the place then I tell you what that's also okay as well and you can plant anywhere you want in pots you could plant all of these plants that I showed you in pots or in the ground so don't be shy Plant a seed, preserve tomorrow, plant a seed, and believe in your pollinators. Believe in your pollinators. They will definitely give you more produce. I hope you enjoyed being with me today and enjoyed my share. See, my sunflower is also saying ouch from the summer heat. So the summer heat does not like any plants. Just to let you know so your iris if they start looking bad don't worry you can trim your iris plants down and make them look just like mine I hope you enjoyed being here with me today once again I thank you for watching my share I'm Spenta your comments like subscriptions are greatly appreciated and I wish you a beautiful day